here. Hello, my name is Andrew Giovinazzi. I am the Chief Operating Officer of OptionFit.com. With a special guest tonight, you will be seeing this at the end, but for right now, uh, we have Stephen Bigelow uh, with 30 years of investment experience beginning in 1976. Steve, I was only 10 back then. I just want to let you know. I thought I was, I thought I was tipping the scales at 50, but I now don't feel so bad. <laughs> Eight years uh, as a broker uh, with Wall Street, I believe, as Kidder was one of them. Um, he's written several books. Uh, he has a business and economics degree from Cornell University, uh, Profitable Candlestick Trading, High Profit Candlestick Patterns, and the latest book, Candlestick Profits. Uh, and he's an active member of the AAPTA, uh, the American Association of Professional Technical Analysts an affiliate of uh, the Market Technicians Associations, and he comes by like once every quarter or so to option pick. Uh, and with that, I am going to throw the screen over to him. Yeah, and let's see to... what we got here. Okay, now you're going to accept. Screen. And Steve, it the floor is yours. All right. Do we have the screen up all right? Uh, yep, it looks good. Okay, good. All right. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you for showing up. And I say a summer evening. Uh, I'm out of Pittsburgh, PA. And usually on the day after uh, uh, Labor Day weekend is uh, like a spigot. The uh, sound or the... Uh, the uh, temperature just drops like a rock but right now it's still summer so anyways so welcome everybody and I guess the first question I asked just so I know how fast or slow to go with the presentations is how many people have seen my candlestick presentations in the past obviously why for yes and for no just kind of get a survey of how fast to go all right All right, so the majority. Um, so what we're going to look at tonight is using the move-in averages. And the great benefit of candlesticks is that it is the accumulative knowledge of everybody um, buying and selling during a particular time frame. So once you understand that concept, that prices do not move based upon fundamentals, prices move based upon the perception of fundamentals, that uh, knowing where prices move from becomes very uh, clear once you know what the candlestick signals are telling you and where they're occurring. And the moving averages are a great uh, spot that the uh, money managers use uh, for their trend analysis as far as their price analysis. So the, our rhetorical question is why is trend analysis important? Because it helps you decide what your positioning should be for uh, a trend, whether you're a, a scalper, day trader, swing trader, long-term investor, knowing what direction the trend is going is obviously going to put some of the probabilities in your favor. And even if you're a day trader, if you know that the trend of a trading entity, whether it's the markets, the uh, a stock you're trading or a commodity, is moving in an upward direction or a downward direction, at least you know which way your bias will be going uh, uh, doing day trades that day. So when we're doing trend analysis, we're using the signals as a number one priority because that is what is actually telling you what's going on in investor sentiment. Then if you apply those signals to patterns, it increases your probabilities. Knowing where the stochastics are, whether you're in an overbought or oversold con uh, condition, uh, tells you how effective those signals and patterns are going to be. And then using things like trend lines and especially moving averages, again, improves the probabilities of being in the right place at the right time. So the moving averages that we're going to be looking at are the simple 200-day moving average, the 50-day simple moving average, the 20-day simple moving average, and then we're going to go into some extra here on what we call the T-line, which is the 8 exponential moving average. So it's just very simple. In the charts, as you can see, my charts aren't very cluttered. You've got the 200-day in red, the blue is the 50-day, the gray is the 20-day, and then again, the T-line, 
which we'll use very effectively along with the moving averages to kind of really fine tune your entry and exit strategies. And the T line is merely the eight exponential moving average. So when you're trading, I mean, you can observe the obvious. And the obvious with candlesticks is every time we hit a peak, we're seeing a candlestick sell signal. And if we're trading below not only a set of moving averages and they're moving down, and we're trading below the T line, and every time we get back up to the T line, we see a candlestick sell signal, like our evening star signal or evening star signal, um, it just puts you in the right place at the right time. It also allows you to tell you what a trend is doing. For example, the T line is a very significant factor in your fine tuning your, your trend analysis because there's a very simple rule of the T line. If you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T line, you can stay long as long as you don't see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T line. And we'll try to get into one caveat of that, which is the further away you move from the T line, the higher the probability. Um, that you're going to move back to the T line. So when I started using candlesticks, I, I didn't have anybody out there to do any analysis with me to, to learn what was going on. Um, and so it, adding all these stipulations or these parameters have made it a lot easier. Uh, back then, obviously, trying to learn any type of trading uh, program, it's good to have somebody around where you can get a second opinion to make sure you're thought process is right. And back when I started, I guess getting on toward 30 some odd years ago with candlesticks, I didn't have anybody around to get a second opinion. I always tell people the only time I could get a second opinion back then was when I'd go to the doctor, I'd say, what's wrong with me? And he says, you're fat. And I'd say, well, I think I want a second opinion. He goes, all right, you're ugly too. So I had to learn every single thing I could about candlesticks and where they work effectively to uh, obviously, my greed wanted me to, to find out where the uh, buying and the selling was occurring with a high degree of probability. And then analyzing the trend, notice what we see right in here. We're in an uptrend, but it looks like they're starting to sell. But knowing what the characteristic of each candlestick signal is, in this case, very indecisive trading, that when they're backing off and they're doing it indecisively, um, it tells us they aren't just selling off with any great enthusiasm, which means more than likely the uptrend is still in progress. We're just going through some profit taking. So what we're looking for is what moving averages or what technical indicators are improving our analysis of what, which direction the trend is going. Obviously, right here on the 50-day moving average, we're seeing candlestick buy signals and a gap up. They pull it back. We see buy signals, candlestick buy signals, right smack dab off the 50. So there's one simple rule again with the T line, the further away you move from the T line, the higher the probability it's going to pull back. And that's kind of true with any moving average. The further away you move from a moving average that's acting as a support level, the higher the probability it's going to pull back. When we take profits, it used to be and that was, that was the whole purpose of my third book, was trying to keep the emotions out of my trading. And candlestick analysis does that with a very good degree of clarity um, that I would hate to take profits because I kept thinking, boy, what if I had, what if I had the Dell of my lifetime and it was just going to keep going up and I decided to take profits here and it turned right around and took off without me. Well, at least now I know when to take profits and when to get back into a trade. If I can see that I'm starting to see candlestick buy signals, and again, this is not happenstance. This is the graphic depiction of everybody in buying and selling during a particular time frame, and this is where the big money is starting to buy back once it comes back down to a support level. And we can see it uh, uh, immediately. So the more technical elements we can put into our analysis, the higher the probability that we're going to be in the right trades at the right time. If this this happened a while ago in the, uh, in the Dow, where we could see there was a trend channel occurring. And every time the uh, market pulled back to the support level, we did another buy signal and it took it back up to the top of the trend channel. So this uptrending, oscillating uptrend was still a uptrend. 
until we saw the doji on this day, and the next morning we woke up and the pre-market futures were showing that the market was going to be down 140 points. That told us there was a whole new dynamic in this trend, and we could see a very simple pattern. There's one simple rule, uh, if you all recall, uh, oh, that simple rule of the doji, that the price is usually going to move in the direction of how they open it the next day after a doji. And I use the term day, this could be a one minute chart, a 10 minute chart, an hourly chart, it could be a monthly chart. It is still the accumulative knowledge of everybody buying and selling during the particular time frame. And before I go too much further, if you have questions as we're going along, don't be afraid to ask. Uh, I'll be glad to try to answer as many as I can while we're going through the process, and then I'll stay around as long as there's questions afterwards. So. Um, anytime you have a question, feel free to ask it. But this told us there was a dramatic change of investor sentiment when we saw that it was going to open lower the next day, obviously with pre-market futures uh, lower, uh, that we were going to start seeing a change not only of this trend channel, but if they broke the 50, which they hadn't done in quite a while, that told us we should be expecting a hard sell off from here. Now the time that the NASDAQ was uh, trading up and down, and it was a very simple uh, uh, analysis uh, to use. And if this, uh, if the Dow is up one day and the Dow Dow's down, or vice, or the Dow's up and the Nasdaq down, vice versa, if there's a major change of investor sentiment. You know, you're in an uptrend. However, notice what happened on this day. We had a bearish engulfing signal. And on the day that the Dow was breaking this downward channel on its chart, we were doing a gap down from a bearish engulfing signal that came right down through the 50. That told us everybody was selling. It was time to not only be out of the, your long positions, but going short. So moving averages have truisms. That if you break, if a uh, moving average support is breached, it will then be tested to see if it's going to act as resistance. So here's a case where when they broke the uh, that downtrend, we could see when they were started buying and they came up and they resisted. So if we were buying down here, we were taking profits here. But notice what happened here. We started seeing buy signals, this time off the 20, and they came back up through the second time through this level. And there's a very simple uh, technical analysis, uh, I'm going to say, adage that if a moving average that had been acting as a resistance is breached, they'll come back and see if it's going to act as support. We can see immediately what the investor sentiment is at those support and resistance levels. I had somebody ask me not too long ago, how many days does it take for you to confirm that you're uh, in a reversal? And the answer is zero, because if we see a candlestick buy signal like this bullish Harami, and they open positive the next day, we're buying immediately because that is the confirmation of what's going on in investor sentiment. All right. I guess we better do a sound check. Is everybody, uh, can everybody hear me all right? Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't sitting here talking to myself, which, um, uh, you were zotting. Okay, some reverberation got fuzzy. All right, I don't know what that was from. Is that any better? Okay, all right, we'll try that. So, anyways, and then the, at the same time, when we're analyzing the trend, notice what was happening here. This is an inverted hammer signal. This is one of the strongest signals. Uh, there's 12 major signals out of the 50 or 60 candlestick signals in the candlestick universe. There's 12 that I've come up with through the last 30 years that come up often enough that uh, that you can just use the 12 major signals. The others don't occur often enough to spend a lot of time and energy uh, learning them. Uh, again, when I first learned uh, candlesticks, I wanted to learn every single one of them. But as I went through the charts, discovered there's these 12 that they work a high percent, probably 99.9% .9 of the time. And if there's another signal out there, you're probably still going to see a major signal that would override that one anyway. So the, the 12 major signals 
this is one of them. The inverted hammer with a, has a high degree of probability that if it opens positive, extremely high degree of probability that if it opens positive, it's going to start trading up. There's your bullish harami, which is in Western terminology known as the inside day. That's one of the tw uh, 12, six buy signals, six sell signals. But again, when we start buying, where do you think everybody's seeing whether this, where this price is going to move to? See what it does at the 50-day moving average. We had a hanging man, a little shooting star doji, a hanging man, and then the failure of the 50. So we're taking profits. But then also notice what happens on our uh, dojis with the big tails to the downside. They're supporting right on the, the 20. And then they gap it up. There's one, one of our signals or one of our patterns is what we call the best friend, which is a doji followed by a gap up the next day. Call it our best friend because that has an extremely high probability that the investor sentiment not only has reversed, but has reversed with good force. So again, this all comes back to if you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T-line, you can stay long as long as you don't see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T-line. Once again, or they resisted the 50 the first time, they went through the second time, telling us our next uptrend uh, was still in progress. So this becomes very simple, very obvious, that when they got to a resistance level, shooting star, and started selling off, that told us that 200 was acting as resistance. When they came back up through the second time, Notice that the candlestick signal was a left-right combo. That's a doji followed by a bullish engulfing signal, telling you there's going to be more upside. Came up through the 200, and came right back to the 200, and then there was our little bullish doji harami, telling us that the selling had stopped right smack dab on the 200 and started the uptrend again. So this is not rocket science. This is just very simple analysis. I tell people, as long as you can see, you can analyze what's going on in investor sentiment. And I kind of equate it to the story of the uh, old couple getting ready for bed, and she's standing there in front of the mirror uh, naked, and she said, look at me. My, my face is wrinkly. My arms are spindly. My butt's scrawny. My legs are uh, thin. She turned around to her husband and said, is there anything nice you could say about my body that would make me feel good? He goes, well, your eyesight's still pretty good. So as long as you can see, you can analyze what's going on at uh, important technical levels like the moving averages. So again, once a moving average is uh, uh, resistance level is breached, it's usually it tests as, as support. And this uh, leads to one of our patterns that is very highly effective. It's called the blue ice failure. And this was uh, named by my late uh, friend Dave Elliott of Wall Street Teachers, that if you break a support level, they'll come up and they'll test it. And he called it the blue ice failure because this is where you fall through the ice, then you come back up and try to find the hole you fell through. There's a candlestick sell signal telling you they couldn't find the hole they fell through, they drowned, so they're going to the bottom of the pond looking for the next support level. So I always uh, helped him out with people remembering this pattern by saying, how do you catch a polar bear? You cut a big hole in the ice, and then you take a can of peas and you spread it around the edge of the hole. And when the polar bear comes down to take a pea, you kick him in the ice hole. Not a real technical uh, analysis, but helped him remember the blue ice failure. So we can see exactly what's going on at the moving averages, and then there's our big morning star signal right smack dab off the 200-day moving average. Where's the next target? More than likely back up to the 50-day moving average. So uh, we also can use the moving averages to add to our pattern breakout credibility. Um, again, here's the T-line. Notice how far away we're moving from the 50-day moving average. When this trend is broken, above the, we see a candlestick sell signal, a doji followed by a gap down and a close below the T-line. Where's your next target? Probably the 50. If it fails at the 50, where's your next target? The 200. Then notice what we see right here, a bullish harami telling us the selling has stopped. And where do they take it? Right smack dab to the uh, 50, and then they started selling it off again. So again, this is just visual analysis that the Japanese rice traders have brought, provided us over the last 400 years, showing us where the high probabilities are where, where uh, prices are going to move to. 
This is our fry pan bottom, big, huge, rounding bottom. And where did it break out? Right where the fry pan bottom started and at the 200-day moving average. So uh, as we go through our training process, teaching people how to use candlestick signals, we're looking for the signal that occurs when it's, the stochastics are in the oversold condition. And my stochastics are set at 1233, which is nothing set in stone. It's just uh, after 35 years, that was the number that seemed to correlate with the bottom of the price move and the uh, top of a price move. So if, when you're buying a signal, you're usually looking for the stochastics to be in the oversold condition when you see a buy signal, because the Japanese rice traders basically say if you're in an oversold condition and you see a candlestick buy signal, there's probably a reversal going on. So where do we want to sell? Usually when the stochastics are in the overbought condition, except if we see it coming out of a pattern like the fry pan bottom, that's usually going to be the point where all the enthusiasm starts breaking it out to the upside, giving us a very strong price move. And if we're seeing buying, if we didn't buy down here, and we're buying right in here, knowing that if it breaks through this level, we have a strong price move, or if we're waiting to see what the next day is, we're already in the overbought condition, and we see it's not resistant to the 200-day moving average, we can be buying immediately, well before everybody else is coming in. So it basically allows us to see what's going on in investor sentiment at important uh, support and resistance. Failure of, uh, of the uh, 50, the support of the 200. A failure at the 50, now we see buy signals come up, fail at the 50, and then take us through the 50. So it allows us to take profits and get into positions at the appropriate times. If we can see there's a downtrend, and we're right here in the 50, which is the 50's been acting as a downtrend. When we start seeing a bearish engulfing signal or an evening star signal, that tells us that obviously this downtrend is still in progress. Where's our next target from here? Well, if we can draw a line right down through here, that's probably where you want to start watching for your buy signals. The stochastics are 1233. They're slow stochastics. And a lot of people uh, ask, well, slow or fast, it doesn't matter. All we really want to see is where are the buy signals occurring? Are they occurring in the oversold condition? Obviously, a candlestick buy signal in the overbought condition doesn't mean very much. Or a candlestick sell signal in the oversold condition doesn't mean very much. But a candlestick buy signal in the oversold condition tells you there's a high probability there's going to be a reversal. Or a candlestick sell signal in the overbought condition tells you there's probably going to be bearish reversal. If we can see what's happening at what everybody else is watching, and we can see it immediately, that just puts us into positions a lot faster or ahead of everybody else. Kicker signal at the 50-day moving average. An evening star signal at the 50-day moving average, telling us that this downtrend is still in progress. When we see a downtrend and they bounce it up to a major resistance level, they broke through, except by the end of the day, they did a big shooting star signal in the overbought condition. Makes it very simple. If they open it lower, not only should we be out of any long position, but we should start going short because that's telling us this is head resisted and the downtrend is still going to be in progress. And moving averages act like magnets. The reason for that is if you are a major institutional buyer, and you see something that you like, but it's drifting back, where do you think they're going to wait until they see if it's going to act as support or not? They're going to wait to see if it gets down here to the 50-day moving average. So anytime we see a price move back, we can see immediately there's a morning star signal. What did that tell us? It told us somebody was starting to buy uh, right here at the uh, that moving average. So if we took our profits up here, and this is what we call a fry pan bottom breakout, which creates a very strong price move. Notice how far away we are from the T-line. We're starting to see sell signals. We can take our profits. We can always buy back if we see a buy signal confirmed at the T-line at the because that's now our next pattern, which is a J-hook pattern, which we'll try to get to before the end of all this. Um, have to cut it short. Yes, it will be recorded, Paul.
I see you're all from the same family, the unknowns. Um, so anyways, we can be buying here immediately knowing we have a high probability trade set up. Notice what this little pattern is right here. This is what we call a doji sandwich. A bullish day, stochastics coming up, the next day they do a doji. We have a very simple rule of a doji, which is it's going to move in the direction of how they open it after a doji. So if they open this positive the next day, we're buying immediately because we know it's going to move in the same direction. And usually the magnitude of this day right here is the same magnitude as this here with the doji sandwiched in, in between. Um, and we know what the results of a doji sandwich is. There's going to be more upside. So if we can see they're supporting, and again, this is what we call uh, convergence analysis, where we're putting as many indicators or many pieces of information together as possible, that if we're in the oversold condition and starting up, we're seeing buy signals right off the 50-day moving average, and we're doing seeing a doji sandwich, which means there's going to be more upside, and that more upside is going to break out through here, that means we've got wave one, wave two, wave three starting in progress, and usually wave three is going to be about the same magnitude as wave one. Again, this is not anything that's set in stone. It's just the probabilities are so great that this is what reoccurs in human nature um, time after time, that we're just visually analyzing when it's time to buy and when it's time to sell. If we can see there's failure at a major resistance level, with candlestick sell signals, it tells us not only do we want to be closing out any long positions, but we want to be going short. Again, there's kind of our doji sandwich gap down um, in this area. So what we're looking for is once we get up to a resistance level, are we starting to see sell signals? Evening star signal right at the 200. Came down through the 50, came right smack dab to the 50, and sold off, that told us if we had covered our short positions, we could start reshorting because they weren't going up through the 50-day moving average. So anytime I see this type of setup, where, I forget what this was, oh, this is the NASDAQ, what do we see right here? You see a doji followed by a bearish engulfing signal, and it closed just above the T-line. Stochastics in the overbought condition. But what had been happening so far? They hadn't been able to close it below the T-line. They'd bounced up through the 50-day moving average. So we know what to do the next day. It should not trade or should not close below the T-line. That would tell me there's a change of the, uh, the trend. To stay long, we need to see the NASDAQ, or stay long things that are affected by the NASDAQ. We need to see it open positive and trade po positive to stay with it. So. Again, this is just utilizing the information that's built into candlestick signals and then adding the other indicators, which is the T-line, and this is what we call a little T-line crunch, which I think I have more charts on. Um, but notice there was the failure. There was our evening star signal with a close below the T-line. Where's our next likely uh, support level? Back down here, so we should be out of our long positions. And this is the part that helped me tremendously. Uh, before candlesticks came along, I was the worst investor in the world. I was even a stockbroker for eight years. And I got out of the business because I found out that the analysts of Wall Street don't know any more about what makes prices go up or down than we do. So again, I would get out of a position and then I wouldn't want to be tricked and get back in. Well now I know with these indicators that if they sold this off, it was time to take profits. The worst case scenario is if they close it back up above the T-line, I could buy back in. But once I started seeing selling, we can see who's starting to win here. The bears are starting to take control because they're closing it back below the T-line. They can't keep up above the T-line. And this is where you start seeing your big breakdown uh, uh, from the sellers or because of the sellers. Notice what they did on this big sell-off. Big, huge profits. This, this big, long uptrend, this is where we started shorting and made huge profits by covering down here. And uh, that's because if this was a daily chart, once the Dow got down here, we start watching the 10-minute chart. And if the 10-minute chart starts churning, because obviously if you have a big move this, this big, 
and you're that far away from the T-line, more than likely they're going to bring it back up to test the T-line. They failed the 50, they brought it back up, they failed the 50 again, we took profits on our longs and started going short again. And usually when they fail the second time, they're going to start going down to the next support level. And if they exceed that, you go to whatever other, other technical level, like the low, to see if this downtrend remains in progress. And notice what, how this, room, this downtrend remained in progress. They could never close it back up above the T-line. What's it telling you? They failed. They brought it back up. They did a doji right here in the overbought condition that just touched the 200 and closed it back below the T-line. Observe the obvious. The obvious is this is a failure. They're probably bringing it back down to test the lower end of the trend channel, which I think they did. Oh, they did. Notice what happened after our doji. There was our doji sandwich, which told us there was going to be more downside. So anytime I see this type of situation, we're up in the overbought condition and we hit a resistance level, notice we have a doji and a doji hanging man. Makes it very simple. If they open this lower the next day, you want to be closing out any long positions that you might have been hoping that would break through the 200-day moving average and start going short. The T-line, if you analyze what the T-line is, remember earlier I said that the moving averages act as magnets. That's because everybody's watching the 50, the 200, and the, the 20. All the big institutions are making their decisions. That's why they're not buying until it comes back to a major support level, or they're not selling until it hits that uh, resistance level. However, the T-line is the 8 exponential moving average. Basically, nobody uses that. So it's, when you put it into context, you essentially have the graphic depiction of what's going on in investor sentiment on the candlesticks, and you've got the T-line, which acts like a natural Fibonacci number. You've got a very powerful combination when you're putting these two together. So if I was short right here and I started seeing a candlestick buy signal, do I start covering my uh, shorts? Not until I see, whoops, ah, goof that one up, until I see a close back up above the T-line. You can take a look at this. What's consistent about this trend? They really can't close it below the T-line. So there was our candlestick buy signal, kind of a morning star signal. You just stay long until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line. Oh, here it was. Oops, this is in the right place. There's our evening star signal. Is this our reversal? It looks like it could be a reversal. But it's not a reversal until you see a candlestick buy signal and a close back up above the T-line. I used to make very good money just trading off the candlestick charts. But there was a lot of times I'd get whipsawed in and out or get, get out of a position because it was showing a sell signal. When I applied the uh, moving averages and the T-line, it improved my profitability tremendously. Again, truism, the further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability is going to come back and test it. So the further we get away from the T-line, I just flip to my 10-minute chart and say, all right, we're way up here, way from the T-line. What's my 10-minute chart doing? If it starts selling back below the, uh, uh, the uh, T-line on the 10-minute chart, I'll take profits because I know I can always buy it back if it comes back up through the 10-minute T-line but more than likely they're going to bring it back down. So why take the risk? Take your profits. If they bounce it up off the T-line, you can always buy back, which is our J-hook pattern. The further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability they're going to come back and test it. Just a very simple process. And the longer a trend stays in, a, in, in progress, the more you want to see that close below the T-line and confirm. There'll be days where it closes just below the T-line after a long uptrend. I'll give it one more day. It needs to open positive and trade positive to stay in it. This is what we call the J-hook pattern. You've had an uptrend and they pull it back and notice what the uh, nature of these uh, signals are. Very indecisive. 
I'll, uh, whoops, oh, I just goofed things up over here. There we go. Very indecisive. So that tells us there's not a whole lot of strength in the pullback. So if I took profits right here, knowing it was going to come back to the T-line, I can buy back here, knowing that maybe I've given up some potential profits, but I haven't been holding on to something that might be heading right back down to the major moving averages. I'll take my profits, and when the probability say it's time to be back in on a J-hook pattern, I know that this wave here and this wave here are going to be the somewhat the same magnitude. Anytime I see a candlestick buy signal, notice our kicker signal, off the 50, that tells me exactly what their decisions were at that level. I want to be buying immediately. Downtrend, kicker signal. A kicker signal is your strongest candlestick reversal signal. Basically, it's where they've opened it here and closed it here. The next day, they gap it up where it opens at or above the previous day's open and goes the opposite direction. That tells you there's been a, the uh, investor sentiment has been kicked in the opposite direction. There's our morning star signal which is what we call a little mini scoop. Notice how flat this handle is and notice how where they were supporting right on the, uh, the 50. Then we saw our morning star signal that acts as like a slingshot effect to the upside. Where was it time to take profits? We saw a hanging man that far away from the T-line. We knew they were coming back down. If we take profits, we can always buy it back up in this area. A failure at the T-line, support at the, I'm sorry, a failure at the 200. Notice when they came up through the 50, they supported back on the 50 and the T-line. When they went through the second time, they came back and used it as support. This is just uh, stuff that you want to add to your arsenal that uh, we have the benefit of using it because we can see exactly what the investor sentiment is at those levels. But just knowing the simple rules of what happens at the moving averages improves your probability of being in the right place at the right time. Strong uptrend. We also uh, show people how to use gaps. Where do most people buy? This is, this is the biggest benefit that I've gained from candlestick analysis was it shows you graphically what's going on in investor sentiment and where most people buy. They buy exuberantly at the top. That was always me. I mean, even as a stockbroker, we'd be going up, going up, and I'd say, this looks great. It's time to buy. I always have to ask myself, how come every time I buy, it immediately turns around and goes the other way? Or every time I sold out because all oh, the news was terrible, the stock would turn around and start heading up. Why is that? Then I, when I learned candlesticks, it would show us graphically where the exuberance is coming in. So instead of being a buyer up here, I'm starting to be a seller, knowing that when they gap it up in the overbought condition, that's the time to start looking for sell signals. And when is it time to buy? When you see a candlestick buy signal and a close back up above the T line. And if you can add the fact that it uh, did it right at the 50-day uh, uh, moving average, that's that much more evidence that this downtrending channel is now reversed and heading up. So was this a good place to buy? Yeah, not too bad. Was this a good place to buy? Yes, it had more in information here. A morning star signal right off the 50-day moving average, right at the same level it supported before, makes a higher probability of being in the right place at the right time. So moving averages just act like uh, the, uh, the grids on the playing field. This is what we call the T-line crunch. Notice how when they started buying, they ran into the res resistance level. Well, there was one thing they couldn't do. They couldn't close it below the T-line. Notice how the T-line crunches everything up through, we're in the overbought condition. Remember, we wanted to buy on the buy signals in the oversold condition. We can also be buying when we see where a breakout, especially with a T-line crunch through a resistance level, like the 50-day moving average, we can be buying because that tells us there's a new dynamic in that, uh, in that stock. Notice the support right here. Where was the next target? Probably the 200-day or the 200-day moving average, and notice when they hit it the first time, this is what we call a bobble. Bobble is when they hit the resistance level, and they pull it back, and they can't close it below the T-line. It's just kind of bobbling in here. Get ready for the next move to the upside. 
key line crunch. Tells you when they failed, they weren't failing all that much. They're coming right back up through the resistance level. And this tells us they couldn't close below the T-line, then they gap it up the next day. We're buying immediately. A lot of people say, well, I don't want to buy a stock that's up 3, 5, 10, 15, 20, 40, 80 percent. You do if it's coming out of a pattern, because that tells you there's a, a whole new dynamic in the uh, 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 whole new dynamic, dynamic in the uh, uh, stock movement. T-line crunch, pushing it back up through the resistance level. What are the expectations from here? A little left-right combo. Um, looking forward to come up to the 200-day moving average. Very simple. If we see a candlestick buy signal and we'll close above the T-line, we can expect it to move up to the ma next major moving average. If it can't close below the T-line, we can expect it to move to the next major moving average. This was soybeans. Was it today? No, it wasn't. But this is uh, this is how I trade on an intraday basis using the 10-minute chart. There's my buy signal, stochastics in the oversold area, close above the T-line. I can just stay long until I see a candlestick sell signal and a close back below the T-line. If I want to trade faster, I go to the five-minute chart. Same scenario. Or if I want to trade real fast, I go to the one-minute chart to see what's going on. So it depends on what time frame you're trading. Uh, it used to be when I was uh, trading the E-minis, I'd use the one-minute, three-minute, ten-minute chart combination. Uh, for longer-term holds, I might use a daily, weekly, monthly combination. I'm a swing trader on my stocks, which usually means my trades last anywhere from two to ten trading days. Uh, so I'll use the daily chart and the 10-minute chart combination. Again, there's your confirmation. They are not going to trade it below the T line, a kicker signal off the, uh, I'm sorry, below the 50, kicker signal uh, uh, to the upside, telling us that the uptrend is still in progress. Morning star signal right off the 50, and they blasted through the second time, kind of a bobble off the 50 through the uh, 200. I guess we just have a lot of these. So using the candlestick signals and the moving averages basically improve your trend analysis tremendously. You can see what's happening at the bottoms. You can see where trend channel is starting to show signals uh, selling at the top. So your timing for trading becomes much more exact that we're buying down here, we're selling up, up here, we're buying down here because we're seeing buy signals. And we're, if we've already got a trend channel in progress, where do you think our next target is? We want to see what's happening when it gets up here and we get a bearish harami. It's time to sell. Comes back down here at the bottom of the trend channel, a morning star signal, and they just touch the 200-day moving average. Then open positive the next day. We're closing out short positions and buying, buying along immediately. This is not rocket science. This is just common sense put into a graphic depiction. Um, and everything I learned about candlesticks through the years, as you learn it, you say, yeah, I knew that. Just makes it clearer, much more clear when I see it in, the, uh, in a graphic uh, setup. There's your big morning star signal off the 200-day moving average. Notice your uptrend stays in progress until you see a sell signal and a close below the T-line. This is the area where you start taking profits on your longs and possibly start going short. Anytime you see a breach, I'll close out a position. Uh, if it's stock with a closing below the T-line, I'll just buy it back when it comes back up above the T-line. Does that mean I get whipsawed? Yeah, if this move was a 10-point move and I only got eight points of it, but those eight points were... Every time when uh, I was in it, I knew I was in the right direction. I'll take eight of that 10, but if I have my correct trade ratio extremely high, the compounding effect is much, much greater than worrying about uh, making every bit of, of a uh, price in a price trend. Uh, again, this was a Dow. There was times where it looks a little bit shaky, but we gave it the benefit of the doubt. It needed to close back up above the T-line. In this case, the next day it opened lower and started trading down. We were closing out positions. This was the Dow today. 
we can see we're below the 50 and we're trading whipsaw right here at the uh, the T line. Now we made a lot of money right here because this pattern uh, I didn't make the chart small enough. This pattern is what we call a dumpling top. That's the opposite of your fry pan bottom. That tells you when they start breaking it down, it's going to be a hard sell. So the whole summer, you couldn't really trade this market because it just waffled. And once we started seeing it waffling and this trajectory was starting to turn down, we knew that we had a fry pan bottom. There was no sense trying to trade it, but start watching for the big breakdown. So we made tons of money that made for all the days that we couldn't trade throughout the summer right here. So basically the Japanese race traders say, let the market tell you what the market is doing. The market was telling us it didn't have any direction and there was no way to make money in here. You can see where a lot of these trends were down, up, down, up, down. I mean, just oscillating every single day. This is where you made huge money knowing what the expected results should be coming out of a fry pan bottom. So we can trade patterns. We're right now we're long ZN, ZGN, uh, X. You can see all the patterns. There was a fry pan bottom that supported right on the 200, broke out. Another fry pan bottom that hit right off the uh, 50 and did a slow curve, broke out here. Now we've got a scoop pattern. A scoop pattern has a flat handle, pulled back right to the 50, came right back up. So again, we're just putting ourselves in situations where the probabilities are pretty strong that we're in the right place at the right time. On the other hand, if we see that the 50-day moving average is acting as a resistance, we're up here in the overbought condition, we see a bearish harami and now a close, a failure at the 50, more than likely they're going to bring it down to this level and possibly bring it down to the bottom of this channel. I was trading crude oil. Uh, short for the last couple of days. I traded it long when it broke out and where did it move to? Right smack dab to the 50 day moving average. We were in a downtrend. So what did we need to see? Um, and this is very simple too. If you're in a downtrend and you see it close right on a major moving average and your stochastics are starting to get in the overbought area, we take profits. What's the worst case scenario? It opens positive the next day telling us the 50 is not acting as a resistance and we can buy right back in. But the fact that it did a bearish harami and it, it touched the 50 and started selling off told us this is probably a failure. So we've been short, shorted uh, crude oil earlier today again because notice what it did every time it came up to the 50-day moving average on the 10-minute chart. Evening star signal, bearish engulfing signal, another little uh, evening star signal. So we've been short. Uh, all day long and we covered our short positions right here on the close. So again, this is not rocket science. I don't t uh, uh, I don't think I'm a great stock picker or trader. I just do what the charts tell me and the probabilities are greatly in my favor. We're probably going to be recommending this one tomorrow, C-A-R-A, because this is what we call the classic. The classic is, notice our fry pan bottom supporting right off the uh, 200 up through the 50 stayed above the T-line, had a very strong price move, and then we had some profit taken, pulled back, and where did it pull back to? Right smack dab to the 50. Now it's curling back up. The classic is a fry pan bottom, which creates a very strong price move. Then they pull it back and then start curling back up for a J-hook pattern. What's our prerequisite for a J-hook pattern? A very strong price move. So this is very common. You see a big fry pan bottom breakout, then the J-hook pattern takes us into wave three, with wave three being the same magnitude as wave one. That's about all I got tonight, but uh, I guess uh, uh, so that if you went through this, Pat's putting out a special. We've got a uh, kind of more detailed analysis of how to use the moving averages with candlesticks. It's a 56-minute video. Uh, I think, uh, uh, Mark, uh, do you have the link for everybody? For 17 bucks, three Starbucks coffees, you've got a, about an hour's worth of just analysis of how the candlestick signals work effectively uh, with the uh, major moving averages. A very basic training, but uh, a, lot of, a lot of information in it.
let's see. So uh, somewhere. Uh, uh, Mark, or uh, yeah, if, if you want to put that link in. Whoops, no, I did this. So uh, with that, if there's any questions, I'll be glad to answer any questions. All right, if not, oops, hold on, I think there is a question. The T-line is the eight exponential moving average, yes, and even if we fine-tune it more, um, we, uh, we use the three T-line, which is the three exponential moving average, to kind of fine-tune when to be in and out of positions. But we use the three T-line when the uh, price moves so fast uh, away from the T-line. Uh, Eric, yes, we have a, uh, I have a chat room, uh, our chat room is open. Uh, during market hours, we usually have around, you know, during the summertime, maybe 150 people in there. During the wintertime, about 300 people in there. Um, I put out stock picks every day uh, uh, and a little short analysis of which way we think the market's going based upon the charts. Uh, but we put the picks out not so that people have picks, but we try to do it in a video format so you're still learning why those were being recommended. What's the, what uh, – Oh, parameters we were using to recommend it. Uh, we've discovered that if you just tell people what to do and they don't understand why they were doing it, they don't learn anything. It's like the uh, cop that's standing on the street corner and uh, he sees this guy weaving down the street, blows his whistle, pulls the guy over, walks up to the window and the guy is drunk, but it, the cop looks at the back seat and there's a penguin sitting there. He goes, what the heck are you doing with a penguin in your back seat? And the drunk said, oh, I found him out on the street and I don't know what to do with him. The cop said, well, take him to the zoo. The drunk said, oh, good idea. I didn't think of that. Well, the next day, the cop standing on the corner. Here comes this drunk weaving down the street again. He blows his whistle, pulls the guy over, walks up to the window, looks in the back seat, and the penguin's sitting there. He goes, hey, I thought I told you to take the penguin to the zoo. And the drunk said, I did. He liked it so much, we're going to a baseball game today. So if you don't really understand why you're doing something, uh, it doesn't help a, a, a whole lot. Let's see. Kara? Yeah, so this is the classic pattern coming out of a fry pan bottom. We're usually looking for fry pan bottom breakouts because they usually create very strong price moves. Then we're also looking after that strong price move, we're looking for the J-hook pattern. How many stocks do you try to work? Oh, again, I put out two or three picks every day. I don't trade all of them. They're just good charts because I've... I may only have uh, at most 10 positions in my portfolio, which is another part of our uh, process for disciplining ourselves to uh, decide what stocks to stay in and which ones to get out. Um, so just because I have two or three picks out every day, that might mean all the positions I've got are acting well. I might not be doing any of those picks, or I might have one position I've liquidated in the portfolio, so I'll pick up just one of those picks. It's up to each individual. And we put out picks. We've got an option trading room. Uh, again, candlesticks work very effectively for timing and it uh, allows you to, to get into your option positions right at the right time. Candlesticks work ex excellent with commodities, uh, Tom. Remember, uh, candlesticks were developed on the most basic of all commodities and that was rice. And the Japanese rice traders that developed this did not become wealthy they became legendarily wealthy. They were the powerhouse, financial powerhouse in Japan for centuries. And it's all based on one simple premise, that human nature is always the same. It's not going to change this month. It hasn't changed over the last 400 years, and it's not going to change over the next 400 years. Uh, 
prices move the same way. That's why we have uh, uh, patterns. Do you follow? Do you f follow your buy signals all day or just end of day? Uh, Gerald, that's yeah. We usually follow it not necessarily all day. Depends on what the time frame is. Somebody's day trading; they're going to be trading during the day. Uh, I usually, if I'm buying on a based on a candlestick buy signal, uh, I will sell based on a candlestick sell signal. It works with currencies. Candlesticks are not a market. I want to say indicator. They're a human nature indicator. So. Whether you're trading stocks, bonds, currencies, commodities, tulip bulbs, anything that has fear and greed in it, um, uh, candlesticks work. It's because it's just the measure of human nature or, or investor sentiment. Uh, the Netflix charts, I can't bring it up, but uh, uh, today it did do a bullish harami, but it didn't come up above the T line. So. Right now, we're still short Netflix because about a week ago, it did an island reversal, three dojis and a gap down to the T-line. Um, so it did a bullish harami today, and it's very simple. If it opens positive and trades above the T-line tomorrow, we close out the short position. What is the address of the chat room? Oh, uh, I think it's probably in the special that you'll get. I don't know whether she added 30 days free trial to the chat room. Our cost of our room is uh, $97 a month, uh, but that also includes, uh, again, we have the chat room open every day, every Monday night and every Thursday night. We do uh, training sessions. We go through what the markets are doing, which commodities are working well, which currencies are working well, which patterns are working in this market, uh, these market conditions. Um, we do that Monday night for members. Thursday night, it's open to everybody. Um, also, we have about 50 or 60 training videos that members can buy at a discount. Or, usually on a, we use, since we're talking Monday and Thursday, on a Tuesday or Wednesday night, we'll go through training sessions like how to use effective stop losses with candlesticks, which are, are uh, very effective because there's just simple rules of, of where investor sentiment should not change a trend, and that's where you put your stop, or when it's entry and exit strategies, or how to scan for the best uh, trades, or how to set up your scans, uh, when to use uh, spreads and option trading. So we do what's on the videos, but we do all those live for members also, uh, so because we're we're kind of constant uh, education program, and then. We're doing this because we're trading, or I'm trading every day, so everybody's seeing what uh, what the parameters are for the best uh, setups to be buying or selling. Plus, we've got enough people in our room that have experience with candlesticks that I get most of my picks for the next day based upon what people have found in the room uh, during the day. Uh, so how much do you say? How do you decide which stocks to pick? Very simple. Which ones have the best? parameters or the best reversal signals. Like I was saying before, the kicker signal is your strongest signal. The doji followed by a gap up in the oversold condition is your best friend. Not only is that going to produce an uptrend, but it's usually going to produce a very strong uptrend. So we teach people how to how to scan for themselves so they're not depending on somebody else. Uh, and the scans are very simple. Uh, even if you don't know what you're doing, in less than 20 minutes each day, you're going to be able to find the best uh, two or three stock picks for the next day. Uh, you mentioned various symbols. Let's see. I need to do this. You mentioned symbols, morning star and evening star or doji. How much? How many such symbols exist? And there are there programs that identify these on the charts or do you do these visually? Uh, there are six major buy signals and six major sell signals. And again, they're very visually easy to recognize. Uh, they're either in the books or uh, www.candlestickforum.com. You can go there and we've got something like 1,300 pages right now of uh, 
information on how to use candlesticks correctly. But the 12 major signals, six buy signals and six sell signals, once you learn those and you understand the psychology that created those, you basically have the same concept of trend movement as somebody that's been trading in the market for 50 years. What other indicators work best with the T-line? Now, uh, Nikki, the first thing is which signals are, uh, okay, I think, oh, there's, uh, yeah, there's this, the uh, link way over to the right. Um, there's the T-line, the moving averages, that's about it, because essentially all the information that you're looking for is already built into the candlestick chart. It's telling you where investors, what investor sentiment is doing. So again, for uh, you know, 73 three Starbucks coffees, uh, we walk you through how to use the uh, moving averages, the major moving averages effectively, and then you can start fine-tuning it using the T-line, the three T-line. Um, and uh, we constantly go through every day which, uh, which patterns are setting up the best. So it's not like you're out there having to learn this on your own. It's a constant uh, uh, supply of which charts look the best, which sectors are. So if you put all your stars in alignment, which is basically, if you can analyze very simply on the uh, index, the market indexes, which way the market's going, you can analyze very simply which sectors are the strongest, and then you can analyze very simply which of those stocks in that sector are the strongest as far as the candlestick patterns and signals. You basically put all the, the stars in alignment and you're, you're buying at the right times when it looks like everybody else is starting to come in and buy and start moving those, those, uh, those prices. So again, when I, before candlesticks came along, I was the worst investor in the world. Now I extract money out of the market every month and I have a very good living doing it. So with that, if there's no more questions, thank you for being here. And as I say, for 17 bucks, just try it. You're going to get a lot more information. I, I think that video is usually a $120 video or something. But the one thing that I found out about candlesticks is everybody, when I first started using candlesticks, I would ask people rhetorically, why, why isn't everybody using candlesticks? It makes so much sense. And everybody said, well, there's too many of them to learn and they don't always work. And I always came back to this very simple analysis. If they didn't work, we wouldn't be looking at them 400 years later. So with that, everybody, thank you for being here. We'll hopefully see you in the chat rooms. And, uh, you know, I, we just want to say thank you, Steve, for coming. And, uh, you know, everybody should have the link. And I hope everybody has a great evening. Um, yeah, all right. So that's, uh, remember, that's http, stevenbigelow.com slash ma. All right, everybody, have a great night.